Greetings once again in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. While watching a television show called The Irrational, where a psychologist sort of helps um, bring justice to different situations using his background in psychology, the conversation between me and the Holy Spirit, my spirit and the Holy Spirit, came up about faith. Because in the episode one, the pilot episode, he basically brings out the um, idea or the fact that the mind itself can deceive you into thinking that you remember something that never happened. So he would do experiments, for example, telling people, just putting something, an idea into the head of his students. And then all of the students confessed to something that they did not do because they even thought that they remembered it. A person would talk to me about something that happened and I would begin to see pictures in my head. And sometimes it could be the Lord showing me something and then sometimes it could be just me thinking I remember something that um, didn't actually or perhaps did happen, but it's not something that I was there when it occurred. So this goes into the scripture which says, be slow to speak and quick to listen. Um, because then, you know, the Lord will give you information of the person you're talking to or just something will happen that will clue you in to know what the truth is and what the truth is not. And so as he's talking about how the mind can play tricks, I am given the revelation that when people are speaking of the mind, they are speaking of what the Bible calls the heart, which is the soul. And the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah that the heart is deceitful above all else and desperately wicked who can know it. And that word heart can be the will, the actual heart, the intellect. And there's various other things. And so it's speaking of what we call the soul, the realm of your thoughts, your emotions, your will, your desire. That word can also mean, did I say the will? Yes. Your desires. So when you're talking about the will, you're talking about desires and again, emotions and thoughts and so forth. And so those are the things that actually will deceive you. What you think you already know. What you think you already know. I believe the word deceit in that scripture in the original Hebrew is a word that refers to swelling up. So now we're talking about pride. So pride and what you think you already know, so on and so forth, is what will deceive you and cause you to have just a false idea of reality. And so that's where um, faith is very powerful. And the Bible says a man is whatsoever he thinks he is or that he shall become. What you think you are is what you are or what you will become. This is why these people who decide to change gender, when they do certain tests psychologically and brain scans and things, it makes their minds aren't lined up with the minds of most males, for example. Some people's minds are just simply different. So when you will assume, for example, about a person, like I've heard people say that men don't know the differences in colors and they will speak about certain things that how a man's mind works and I'm sitting there thinking but my mind does not work that way and in some cases for psychologists and things they will try to equate that to sexuality when it really is just something physical in the chemistry of your brain due to being left-handed and the fact that while in the womb left-handed those who are born left-handed will develop a portion or parts of their brain that are responsible for creativity, um, possibly emotions and things like that, those things will develop while even in the stomach. So then you would have, for example, a woman who is born left-handed will probably have even more intuition than other women. And so then you did have cases where people would assume that you were a witch if you were left-handed in ancient times. If they're talking about... Um, <laughs> You know, Salem, the Salem witch trials and all of that. And then for a man, what will happen is because that side of the brain is more so the side of the brain that operates more in women. Um, in, the, in the sense that women 
neurolo neurologically. The synopsis of the brain is said by scientists to happen and trigger op upon both hemispheres of the brain. Whereas for men, it will only be more so the one hemisphere of the brain. But if you are a man born left-handed, those the entire both hemispheres are going to be more active. And so creativity and things like that will be something that you will experience. So then what happens is people will see and notice those things and assume and begin to say, oh, it, this is because the person, he's feminine. Oh, he's gay. See, there you go. There's the deception. What you think you know has deceived you. No, the person is simply more creative. The person simply has more intuition. The person is a man who simply can understand women better and should probably be a better husband than most men. But then the women reject him because they feel like he seems more like me. And so then they pick someone else and then there you go. You've been deceived because now you're being abused and you are divorced and you've got three children. And so there you have it. So deception, the mind, the soul, the heart. Um... It is a very tricky thing, <laughs> and, 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 and faith, faith plays a, plays a big part because whatever you put your faith in, whatever you put your faith in, is very powerful. Doubt comes in when there are options. I never was presented with any other option for sickness rather than chicken noodle soup, ginger ale, and maybe a rub down and some Isoporol, am I saying that correct? Alcohol, rubbing alcohol. No one ever told me that it wasn't going to work. Everyone seemed to be in agreement that this was the normal thing that all human beings do. And this is what you're supposed to do when you're sick. And when you're somebody that's sick and you want to be well. And you're told to do this and you're going to get better. And everyone seems to believe it. And you're thinking, oh great. And sure enough, it would work. Now that I'm older, I realize, as someone told <laughs> my father's second wife, um, you know, it's just really in your mind. There's no medical, scientific, like, reason why rubbing alcohol helps with pain or anything. And she's like, I always use that. <laughs> you know, if my knees hurt, stuff, I might rub some alcohol on it. It's because your faith, the Bible says, has made you whole. <laughs> so when my grandmother was doing those things to this day, see, when y'all go and they tell you to put anything in your body and just inject with stuff. And I'm thinking, what? You better go get you some orange juice. You need some vitamin C. I don't care what they are new. What is a what? You better drink you some, put some ginger ale and orange juice and mix it together and drink that. Garg with some salt and water. You need to go take a hot steam bath. <laughs> you need to rub down some alcohol. Put on some more clothes. Put a hat on your head. Stop going outside without a hat on your head. Like my mindset. But for others, <laughs> their faith is that they got to do whatever the doctors say. And so because of what you thought you knew, there you go. <laughs> faith, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Doubt and unbelief comes in when you are given options and alternatives. Satan said, hath God really said? And when I watched that show, the um, irrational, the mind games and the psychology, it all boils down to me to the, has God really said? Is that really what he said? Is this really the truth? Are you sure? Can you be absolutely sure about it? And then when you begin to think of options and alternatives, you are in doubt and you are unbelief and faith is messed up. And then you can even convince yourselves, as this man did in the um, television show, that he had committed a crime. He had distinct memories of the crime, although he never committed the crime. It no nothing he thought happened, happened, but he literally has memories. They arrested the other person and he was in the court still remembering doing something that he absolutely has been proven not to have done. Build your hopes on things eternal. Ho to God's unchanging hand. God bless you. Jesus is Lord.
he's on his way. <laughs> you should know this by now, right? So get a Bible, read it, and do what it say. God bless you.